Hello, my name is Joseph Charlanis, and I'm going to be teaching you about cadmium selenide quantum dot synthesis. To begin, a quantum dot is a nanocrystal that exhibits both quantum mechanics as well as bulk classical mechanics. These nanocrystals are in the size from approximately 10 to 1,000 nanometers in size. Another feature of these is that they are self-assembling, which will be seen in the actual synthesis. In quantum dots, one of the special properties is that they have controllable band gap sizes. This means that you can control the gap in which the electron is excited to the next energy level leaving a hole also known as an exciton. The visible absorption and photoluminescence of these cadmium selenide nanoparticles depend on the size of the particle. Octadecane is used as a non-coordinating high boiling solvent. A sudden injection of room temperature selenium solution into the hot cadmium solution produces seed crystals which then grow quickly. Samples are withdrawn from the hot solution and quenched at room temperature to produce a series of increasing particle sizes. Now on to the actual procedure. The visible absorption and photoluminescence of these cadmium selenide nanoparticles depend on the size of the particle. Octadecane is used as a non-coordinating high boiling solvent. A sudden injection of room temperature selenium solution into the hot cadmium solution produces seed crystals which then grow quickly. Samples are withdrawn from the hot solution and quenched at room temperature to produce a series of increasing particle sizes. Now on to the actual procedure. Safety is a must. Read the MSDS of all materials you will be using. This includes octadecane, cadmium oxide, selenium, trioctophosphine, and oleic acid. Gloves and lab goggles should be worn at all times and all chemicals and reactions take place under a fume hood due to the dangers of selenium powder and cadmium oxide. Before you start synthesizing your quantum dots, a selenium soft solution must be prepared beforehand. Measure out approximately 30 milligrams of selenium powder on an analytical balance under the fume hood and pour it into a 10 milliliter round bottom flask that has 5 milliliters of octadecane. Use a syringe to remove 0.4 milliliters of trioctophosphine. If possible, perform this under removal under inner atmosphere if your container has a sure seal cap on it. Place a magnetic stirring bar into the round bottom flask, close with a septum, and stir over a magnetic stirring plate until the selenium solid fully dissolves. After it is dissolved, you now have your stock solution. First, you will prepare a test tube rack with 11 clean test tubes. The next step is to get 25 milliliter round bottom flask and fill that with approximately 13 milligrams of cadmium oxide, 0.6 milliliters of oleic acid, and 10 milliliters of octadecane. Clamp the round bottom flask above a thermal well. Place in a stopper with a thermometer that reads above 225 degrees Celsius and heat the solution. Keeping a close eye on the thermometer, remove the septum of the selenium sock solution. When the temperature reaches 200 degrees Celsius with a glass pasture pipette, remove a sample and place into a test tube. Next, once the solution reaches 210 degrees Celsius, pipette 1 milliliter of the selenium sock solution into the cadmium oxide solution. Once you do this, you must start a sock watch. Every 10 seconds for one minute, remove a sample of the cadmium selenide and place into different test tubes. After that first minute, the next four samples will be taken at intervals of 30 seconds, so the whole procedure happens over the case of three minutes. If you were successful, you should see a distinct color change down the line of the test tubes from yellow to a dark red. You can also check under a long wave ultraviolet light to see if the quantum dots fluoresce. Measurements and calculations. Using octadecane as a blank, use a UV-Vis spectrometer to measure the peak wavelengths of your cadmium selenide quantum dots. Graph the absorbance as a function of growth time, the x-intercept of the linear portion of the absorbance as a function of wavelength graph is a measure of energy. Up here I have an example of a UV-Vis spectra of two different samples of cadmium selenide ranging from 400 to 650 nanometers on the x-axis and 0.05 to 0.40 for the absorbent. By using this form of the Schrodinger equation and a little bit of algebraic manipulation and use of the quadratic formula you can solve for the radius of your quantum dot. Many of the variables and constants are right down here. Planck's constant, speed of light, charge of electron, permittivity of free space, and your mass of the electron. I hope you enjoyed watching my video and have a successful experiment.